All right, guys, welcome. We are early, so if uh, if you're here, thanks so much for being here. It is right now 1:56 p.m. Uh, that's Eastern, and I just decided to start a little bit early because we had nothing better to do, and so we can just hang out for a few minutes um, before we actually get to uh, all the different corals on the live show. Um, and just so you remember, there's the flashlight as well, Robbie. This is Robbie's uh, first time back in a little while. I don't remember when the, you were here last. Uh, right before the Halloween. Hmm. I don't the Halloween one. Oh, really? So that's like um, yeah. September? You were here for September? Early October, yeah. Oh, well, October 1st. Yeah, gotcha. All right. So I'm just still getting situated here. Hopefully you guys are all enjoying your weekends. Um, it's... It got frigid here. Yesterday was like really nice, um, practically 70 degrees, and right now it is snowing outside. So, it is chilly. Okay, so I need to just... Setting up, setting up, setting up. All right, so uh, right now on the screen, I have... Uh, basically how the live sale works, the, the, the rules. Um, you can watch the, the, the live sale on youtube.com slash title gardens. And if you want to purchase anything from the live sale, you have to go to the title gardens website. And there's a, a link in the top left. It's a little flashing red dot that says live sale. If you scroll down, you'll see like a numbered list of items. And today we're going to be going over 200 of them. Excuse me. So, um, <clears throat> The shipping, it's uh, $39.99 flat rate. Uh, orders over $250 ship for free. So as you uh, purchase corals, it's kind of a good idea to purchase them one at a time as you, as you, as you like because um, in order to actually receive the item, you have to check out completely. So um, make sure to fully check out and select local pickup slash live sale so you're not charged multiple times for shipping. And if you happen to be charged multiple times for shipping, don't worry about it. We will give refunds because somebody always um, always ends up paying twice because um, the thing defaults to uh, flat rate shipping. So that does happen on occasion. Um, so uh, as we get started here, let's see. I want to make sure that I can actually read chat. So I'm going to change this just a little bit. And if you guys are getting warm, you can crack this door open. Ah. Yeah, Robbie's complaining about first world problems like being under lights that are too bright. Okay, actually, what am I doing here? I, I need to see this. Yes, there we go. Perfect. I need to see the actual chat. All right. Okay, so before we get into the actual coral bit, I have to say thank you to the Patreon folks. So thank you guys so much. It's uh, Jeff, Louise, Nathan, Phil, Jason, Dave, Nancy, and Ryan. Uh, these guys, so okay, for, for those of you that are unaware, Patreon is like a donation site, and it's mainly for creatives, YouTube creators, that sort of thing. So these folks have donated at least $5 per video. And so if you if you want to if you're interested in, in donating to Patreon, obviously it is completely optional. There's some minor perks like you get shout outs on these shows, that sort of thing. Um, you can go to patreon.com slash title gardens and uh, and just see how that works. Essentially, you're 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 you'd be a sponsor of the title gardens YouTube channel. OK, and uh, this list will come up at, at different times. So I can say thank you again. Yes, I, I'm drinking again. So. It's not that it's so much of a social thing. It's just that there's beer left over from the last live show that we did. And I need to get that space back from my fridge. And um, none of my friends really drink that much. So I'm the only one actually drinking here today. So I, I am that alcoholic. Like uh, Luke doesn't drink at all. Michael is trying to, to cut down. And so is Robbie. They're like weightlifting dude bros that are trying to cut down on weight so unfortunately alcohol is out of the equation for right now 
So welcome everybody. Um, questions. Let's see. Shipping to Canada? Unfortunately, no. This is U.S. only shipping. Um, hello from South Africa. Hello as well. Hello, Miss Saltwater Tank. Yeah, you missed the uh, the other drunken live show. So hope so. Glad you're able to join us for this one. And she's drinking too. So it's not just me. There we go. And of course, all of you guys are welcome to, to partake in whatever's legal in your area. I don't want to hear about some five-year-olds that are watching the stream starting to drink because of me. <clears throat> Alrighty. So it's 2.02. Welcome, everybody. Thanks so much for joining. The first coral here is a painted trachea. It's probably a good six inches across. Yeah, if you watched my uh, my 10 question um, YouTube, uh, I, I guess it's like aquarium tuber challenge. These are my least favorite, but it's because I'm in the business of propagation and these, can, these, uh, these corals really can't be propagated. So that's kind of like my rationale. As a showpiece coral, they're amazing. And we have t a total of four of them. So let's go to number two. What salt do you guys use at Tidal Gardens? We use Omega C. And in fact, we just got another pallet of Omega C yesterday. Um, we buy, and so part of it is because it is relatively inexpensive and it's made in Ohio and it gets delivered directly to, right to my doorstep. But unfortunately yesterday, the entire pallet of all these salt buckets had tipped over in the truck. And so I had to help the, the, the truck guy unload it first off of the truck and then into my little warehouse space. So I got plenty of exercise moving 50 something um, buckets of salt. It's quite a, quite a good workout, quite a good workout. All right, let's go to number three. Everybody's drinking. Yeah, so this is another painted trachea. It's a little, little awkward. Come in. <laughs> that was a very weak effort. <laughs> the, the, the parents had just come in. What's my salinity at? Funny you ask what my salinity is at. So we've been using the same uh, refractometer for ages. Let's go to number four, Robbie. We've been using the same refractometer for ages, and eventually this little hinge on the refractometer broke off, and so we were just still using that same refractometer. I'm like, you know what? Why don't I just go and spend the $20 or whatever it is to go get another refractometer? So we get this new one in. The first thing that we notice is every tank is extremely high in salinity. And we're like, what's the deal with this? Because like we're getting readings of like 1.035 and stuff, like really high. And I'm wondering like, man, well, which one is right, you know, between the old one and the new one? So we, you know, we just tested it with, um, with RO water. The new one, perfectly at zero with RO water. Um, the old one we tested, it is at exactly minus 20. <laughs> so we've been like uh, really high salinity here for a really long time probably. And now it's it's closer to 1.029 ish, but ideally um, we're targeting like the 1.02627 range. But for ages here, we were really really high. <clears throat> Nancy Matthews, don't forget to eat a bowl of rice so you don't get messed up. That's racist. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Totally joking. All right. Next up is uh, number five. This is a jack-o'-lantern leptosiris. Okay. So I also have a little bit of story time. Um, yesterday, you may or may not have noticed, but Tidal Gardens was actually down. 
So if you went to our website or if you tried to send me an email, I didn't receive the email. And if you went to the website, you, you would have seen some blank page of some sort. Okay, let's go to number six. It's another jack-o'-lantern. Um, yeah, the reason why you would have seen a blank page is because um, my host uh, was migrating over to like a new system. And during that process, what happened was uh, it's just stuff on my account got all kinds of screwed up. So, uh, instantaneously, my account got suspended. So that like it killed my it killed TitleGardens.com. It killed my email. It killed all that stuff. And whoa, way too bright. <laughs> yeah, that's super bright. Yeah, um, yeah. So you have to like fiddle with the exposure. You had to compensate. Yeah, there you go. We got new batteries for the flashlight. It's a little bit brighter than we expected. Um, so anyway, yeah, so TitleGardens.com got suspended. Let's go to number seven. The, what had happened was, in their database, they had duplicated an invoice from three years ago. And so as soon as this, this like new record just showed up in their database, suddenly my account is three years delinquent. And so instantly got, got, uh, got suspended. So needless to say, I was screaming and yelling at some poor fool, and it's probably a good thing that it didn't happen today, and that it happened yesterday and not today, because this poor tech support person in India or whatever got all kinds of an earful from me yesterday. Okay, let's go to number eight. <clears throat> Did you get any sleet come through your area? Kind of. It's a little bit snowy here. Between Than and Missile, I don't know who has a calmer, calmer delivery. You two are the psychotherapist of the reef, YouTube reefing world. Probably Miss Saltwater Tank has a more calm demeanor. I think I can get generally more feisty, especially when I'm drinking. Okay, let's next up number nine. What is the recommended lighting for Rainbow Monty? Pretty high. I mean, I'm guessing between 150 to 200 par. That's probably what I would keep it under. We I, actually I should probably do a, a quick video on this, but Luke had brought over his um, his par meter, and so we did uh, do a couple of different readings on all these different tanks, and a lot of the SPS did really nicely under uh, about 150 to 200. Is this number nine still? Okay, let's go to number ten. think I'd win in a bar fight if we're both drinking. I don't know, maybe. I'm a lot fatter in person, so my sheer fatness might win a bar fight. Yeah, people don't people don't know don't know how exactly how big I am. I'm almost 200 pounds. I'm six foot tall. No, that's still that's still fairly chubby. I'm like Luke's size. And Luke is not svelte. <laughs> so Luke, how, how much do you weigh? About 195. 195? I oh, see. Okay, no. technically I weigh like 194. Yeah, yeah he's he's uh not as tall as me. Luke is a fat Trump supporter, says Luke. What? Trump's not a bad word yet. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go to number 11. All right. Can I please get a shout out? Life of Isan, E-H-S-A-N. How do you pronounce that? E-H-S-A-N, go. Isan, there you go. All right, let's go to number 12. 
Kessel or Ecotech? Setting up a 120 soon. T5. That's the correct answer. <laughs> you know. it, it, yeah, if you if you haven't paid attention to this channel lately, it's it's I've been in, in T5 land. You know, I'm liking this new flashlight or the, or old flashlight with new batteries. Um, yeah, if if you go to like the if you angle it so it doesn't hit the back, that that's good. All right, let's go to number thirteen. I don't know if Sam can handle a dirty fighter. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, I saw that. So I've never been in a fight. Like I, I don't know if like that's a common thing to have never been in a fight, but I've never been in a fight. I've uh, like when I was younger, I had like a second degree black belt in like two different martial arts. Never been in a fight. Okay, next up, number fourteen. Yeah, okay, so this is the green Spartan Leptosiris. Yeah, these things are looking great. I'm waiting for your video review on Aquaphor Assault. I'm assuming you're talking to, to MST on that, um, because I don't really switch salts very often. You're not alive until you get punched in the face. I've definitely been punched in the face. I have definitely been punched in the face by people who knew how. But uh, that was part of what I was paying for, I guess. Okay, next up, 15. I've been punched in the face by Olympic caliber people who know how to punch people in the face. <laughs> Uh, let me tell you, it's it's an overrated experience. I probably wouldn't recommend that. Next up, one six or sixteen. I'm already jumping to like one sixteen. Uh, like, yeah, it's like I'd probably keel over now. I'm forty two. Yeah, it's like I'm forty, and whatever whatever nostalgia that you have about your athleticism once you're 40 years old i can guarantee you whatever it is you thought you were able to do athletically it is not true now whether it be basketball whether it's hockey whatever whether it's waking up in the morning and walking down the stairs it is different at 40 than it was at 18 let me tell you everything's different like what you're not an athlete anymore after that age <clears throat> that was quick. Are you trying to get through the show before drunk thirsty? Not sure what that means. I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a, I'm not a good, good drinker yet, or ever. Canada. Do you sell to Canada? No, I'm sorry. U.S. only. Yep, we're on seventeen. Faraz, what did I miss? You missed about 16 corals, so not very much. Yeah, these these uh these chalices are slick. We haven't got into the crazy crazy chalices um, so much, but I think that like as as winter progresses, we'll be doing more with that. How quickly do these chalices grow? Um, this type is pretty quick. Like this is kind of a generalization, but I've noticed that the the ones with the smaller eyes, the Echinopora variety, they tend to grow more quickly. All right, let's go to 18. So these are Pink Floyd chalices. Um, again, not Echinopora, slightly larger polyps, so um, in general, slightly slower growth. Shipping to Florida? Yes, we do. Do you feed candy cane coral? Um, I guess not that intentionally, but yeah, we do. Just as much as we feed any coral, I guess. Let's go to number 19. A little bunny dies somewhere, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately we can't ship overseas very well. Um, part of it is like, the, the sheer cost of it is it's like a big deal. 
There's also a lot of issues with um, with just getting it into the country, and then once it's into your country, it's how to get it out of customs and stuff like that. So a, a lot of places simply just don't have a procedure for this stuff. So like this this box will show up, and it needs like all this CITES verification and all that, and there's no office there that even deals with this. So it'll just sit there and die. So that's kind of a problem, obviously. So. A lot of countries kind of struggle with just the entire chain of custody as far as corals go. So in addition to probably $500 in shipping, it's going to be like a coin flip as to whether um, anyone's going to actually receive these items. This is 20. All right. Sorry about that. This is 20. Yeah. Uh, sorry, shipping price. Okay. Shipping price, $39.99 flat rate. It's free after two hundred and fifty dollars. I am missing some context on these comments. I'm lost. So hopefully Luke is taking care of your questions. Okay, let's go to twenty one. So Mike, he's like lamenting his uh, like the, he's seeing all these beautiful corals and can't uh, and can't get any in Canada. Well, a lot of Americans seem to want to join you in Canada lately. So that's going to be a common sentiment. How many are you showing today? Looks like about two hundred. All right, let's go to twenty-two. Of all the chalices we have, this is one of my favorite. I like these guys quite a lot. Okay. Let's go to 23. So this is the last beer I'm having today, so it's not gonna, I don't expect to get too crazy. And Mike's leaving, so see you, Michael. So Michael has to go to, uh, what kind of function would I call it? It's like a work function. It's not the NRA thing, is it? Yeah. It is the NRA thing. So the, so uh, if any of you are, are gun nuts, like Luke here, Mike works for a company that helps out the NRA. So the NRA is gonna wine and dine Mike Michael while we do this live show stuff. Can you uh, turn the the right switch inside that little box? The right one. Great, got it. Thanks. It's like super dark outside. I know I realize that it's only like 2:20 p.m., but it's like practically pitch black outside now. See ya. All right, we're on 24. Okay. What's the total for free shipping? It's 250. You need to get to 250. Uh, if the child's mouth is wide open, is it a sign that they're stressed out? Mm, not necessarily. So, what's the general size of these frags? Um, Kind of hard to say. So the one that you're looking at right now, it's three polyps on like what looks like a like a half inch frag plug. Okay. Next up, twenty five. These are some pink plasmas. Okay, let's go to 26. These are, I guess, are all of the, like, the slightly higher end Zoas. I swear, Than keeps raising email free shipping cost.
the free shipping cost, that's literally never changed. It's always been 250. Unless I'm misunderstanding. Okay, next up, uh, 27. The free shipping has always been 250, like from, from day one. We've never ever changed it. What did I miss? I'm confused. Just oh. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, we're confused. Okay. No, I, I keeps raising the shipping. It's like, it was always $39.99, and then it was always free shipping after $250. Like, we've never gone back and changed that. Can you ship out items one here on a specific day? Yes. So just you have to send me an email and just say, I'd like it shipped on such and such day for such and such delivery. That's all. All right, let's go to 28. I know it's a joke gone bad. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Humor's hard sometimes. <laughs> and unfortunately, this is not amateur night at the improv. This is a much bigger crowd. <laughs> Oh boy. Alright, let's go to number 29. So, is anybody still watching college football? Are you watching college football, Luke? I stopped caring quite so much after my team blew it last week. I'm a, I'm a Michigan Wolverines fan of sorts, and they kind of played poorly enough to lose yesterday, or last week. All right, next up, number 30. Some purple people, eater zoas. Do you guys know how to tell the difference between male and female rock flowers? I do not. Somebody else might, but I don't know. No, no, sorry. I've heard it before. Somebody just had described it to me, but then again, I've never really looked very hard. All right, let's go to 31. These are some of the most expensive zoanthids we have. Usually we don't have um, zoas at this price point for the live show because like generally speaking, um, most folks are, are looking for like the, the more inexpensive frags, but occasionally we do like to throw in some of the higher piece, higher priced pieces just so you guys get a, get a, a glance at it. My wife Morgan is watching the show to tell her to let me buy some corals. Yes. There's much worse things in the world to spend money on than corals. So this is, this is a good thing. Let's go to 32. These are some deep blue sea zoas. The only sports I, I watch right now are Cleveland Cavaliers basketball and the UFC. So speaking of the UFC, um, I was extremely impressed by what I saw from Conor McGregor. Okay, let's go to 33. Now that he's fighting like smaller guys than um, than at 170 pounds, like so he's not fighting like Nate Diaz sized guys. It just shows like just how dominant his punching power is. I mean, he completely flatlined Alvarez like every single time he threw a left hand. So I was like super impressed by Conor McGregor, even though I'm not a big Conor fan, but there's no question that he has no business being in 155 anymore. What's so special about Macaws Zoas? It's just they're not easy to find at all. A lot of it comes down to just that. Like it's usually some combination of does not propagate well. In that case, it's not true. Those propagate just fine. And the other is just like, they're not that common. Um, we don't see them hardly ever. Next up, 34. These are some lunar eclipse zoas. When will you get to SPS? Um, we start, I don't know, 70s maybe? Something around there? Yeah, 69, 70. Yeah, he pretty much looked perfect against Eddie Alvarez. Okay, next up, 35. 
these are some underworld halo zoas. It's a little difficult to see, but there's actually a red ring on the face of these guys. There might be a better picture on the website once we actually put these guys on the website, if and when. Uh, what's the difference between pink elephants, Macaw, and Chiquita? Are they the same? Uh, I'm not really sure because I'm, I'm not I'm not seeing a picture in my head of pink elephants in Chiquita. Google image search might help. Not sure. Uh, 36. So we're gonna have more Zoas later, but those are the first batch. Um, this is a like a sky blue Indonesian hammer. We almost never sell these guys. Um, something happened a long time ago where we lost a whole bunch of these guys and it's only and we only had one head left and so it, we've been propagating from the single head back again so this is the first and probably only time you're gonna see one this calendar year oh. <clears throat> yeah so Connor I want him to fight um, now I don't want to see him fight Teron Woodley. I, I want him to fight, um, uh, shoot, what's his name? Nurga Gamenov? Khabib. Khabib. Yeah. Um, but I don't think he's gonna because I think Khabib would absolutely destroy him. But then again, a lot of people thought that Alvarez was gonna destroy him and that didn't happen. Now let's go to number 37. Did you guys cover shrooms? No, shrooms are, are gonna come later and we don't have that many tonight. Um, it's today. A lot of it is gonna be a Rodactus. Just, just a, a preview. Okay, number 38. This is 38, isn't it? No, it's not. That's 37? Okay, okay. They look the same if you Google them. Maybe there's a difference. There's a good chance that they all might be the same. Um, there's a lot of corals that go by different names. And it's just a matter of like who's doing the naming, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes there really is a difference and that you kind of have to be careful of that more as a seller than anything. Cause it's like, you don't want to deceive anybody and say, oh, this is a something or the other. And it's slightly different. Um, but sometimes like certain things are just called or some things are all the same and they're just called by different names that happens a lot 39 as much as possible we try to stick with whatever you know people actually search for and are familiar with so for example we would never rename well anything but we certainly wouldn't rename something like an eagle eye zoanthid or a radioactive dragon eye zoanthid which is like extremely like well settled in everybody's minds as to what that is I mean, there's no point in like making up a new name for that and having it literally not show up anywhere in Google. That's not exactly, you know, helping things. Okay, let's go to number 40. Did you guys actually enjoy the, uh, the, the 10 question um, aquarium tuber challenge. I mean, not that the, the, the questions were like super, um, super general, like, you know, like what's your favorite coral? What's your favorite fish? I mean, th there wasn't a, like a huge deep dive into any particular topic or anything or like, I don't know. So, I mean, l let me know, like, what, what did you guys get out of that? And, and if you were to ask a different question than what was asked during the sh during that particular uh, uh, YouTuber challenge, let me know what, what question was like, you know, just like, just burning with you guys that just simply isn't covered in that in that challenge because like when, when I when I saw those questions I'm like pretty simple <laughs> we can do this which is also funny because I don't have a favorite coral very much next up number 41 kryptonite candy canes are these branching hammers or walls they are always branching um, I almost never have wall hammers. It goes back to the whole propagating thing. Not really that easy to propagate wall hammers. Okay, number 42 is a slightly larger one. Or maybe not. Maybe it's the same size. Uh, 
this one might be splitting into two. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, number 43. Do you have any tips, suggestions on getting rid of dinoflagellates? Um, there are tips that I could give you, but honestly, uh, your best bet is just to do water changes and just scrub the glass more often because the stuff that to do really take care of dinoflagellates uh, might have like a detrimental effect on your corals as well because like you're getting into a, a thing where like dinoflagellates and zooxanthellae that are living in the corals there's a quite a bit of overlap that's happening and what's going to kill one might kill the other at that point so i mean you kind of have to control silicates well for dinoflagellates i believe um, but you kind of, yeah, it, it, it's a, it's a tough, um, it's kind of like a tough little like fine line there because the sort of stuff that's going to strip out the things that, that grow dinoflagellates might inhibit the growth of corals or, or worse. So it, like the, the most general advice is just to keep up on your water changes just for overall water chemistry and lower nutrients. Um, but you know, dinoflagellates are just a thing that you just kind of just kind of have. I mean, most folks clean their glass like every other day or every third day, so it's not something that you know people just completely eradicate ever successfully. All right, let's go to forty-four. Uh, Joy Baker, are there going to be any pectinia? Unfortunately, no. There's not. No pectinia today. Any elegance coming up? I believe we have one on this show. Oh, sorry, I'm so entertained, I forgot the thumbs up. If you guys could please, throw a thumbs up on this video. It helps me uh, when uh, this video eventually gets published to YouTube for other folks to find it later. I think the, all, the little, all the engagement figures help a lot. So yeah, if you could, throw a thumbs up or throw a thumbs down if you don't like it. That's also perfectly acceptable. All right, let's go to 45. This is a cobalt candy cane. What do you think of the bubble method to clean your tank? I don't know what that is. So, the bubble method of cleaning your tank. I think it's like once a day you just push a bunch of micro bubbles in your tank. That's what I thought it might be. So are you just basically just pumping micro bubbles in? Um, kind of like basically turning your whole system into like a, a small protein skimmer for a little bit? I don't know. I've never really tried it on purpose. Not sure. Okay, next up, 46. This is an Australian Duncan. I don't know if Duncans are from any other place in Australia, but um, that's where we got these. And thanks so much, guys. Uh, especially the international folks. I mean, like the international folks, I have to say, are like the hardcore ones because they can't even purchase. There's like no opportunity to get any of these corals. It's just, um, they're, they're just hanging out. So props to you guys. Let's go to 47. Larger colony of Duncans. I got one thumbs down already, I see. Was that you, Luke? No, not, okay. It can be, yeah. Either way, thumbs up or thumbs down. Let's go to 48, which is the elegance. Yeah. Get the whole thing in frame here. It's probably four inches, maybe. It's got purple tips. It's a nice piece. Usually we sell these things for um, about 75 starting, between 75 to 120 depending on size. So a little, little bit of a discount there. So what's the point of the, the, the bubbles then? So the bubbles... It's like a big skimmer. It's like a big skimmer, then, but then does it collect in like something? Like they a... Float back up and they go down in your sump. Like a, like a filter suck maybe? Okay. 
Still waiting for overnight international shipping. It all depends on how much you want to spend. And I mean, you do realize that like, if these are going overseas, you need an import license. Like, it's not just something that that uh, that just goes right over this border and like, oh, no problem, it's gonna show up on your doorstep. It's like, it is a process. Things could go really wrong with customs. And yes, you do need import permits. So keep, in, keep that in mind. And those are not cheap. And the shipping and the whole process is not cheap. It's hundreds of dollars. Don't know anything about it, but in the last 10 weeks I've seen 10 videos on it. So I can already tell you, regardless of whether or not it is effective, um, I'm going to say that it has never been necessary up to this point in time. So take it for what it's worth. Hello from France. Hello. I haven't been to France in ages. The last time I was in France, I was in, I think, in high school. And I've never made it back, unfortunately. Okay. Oops. All right, let's go to number 50. So Pavonas, we have a, several different types of Pavona. They're all very fast growing SPS, very easy. So if you're looking to kind of get into stony corals and into more of the SPS, these are a decent choice. And in some cases, they're completely overgrowing entire trays of that, that we have. They just completely grow off of their plug and onto the rack itself. <clears throat> What's this I hear about a group of people trying to stop the sale of corals? Um, there's a bunch of different uh, opinions on, on the hobby when it comes to that. Let's go to 51. This is a purple pavona. Um, so, like I said in a, in a past video I did about aquaculture, um, the, the hobby is extremely small. It's very, 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 very tiny. Um, but it's, it's a very, very convenient scapegoat as well. So it's very easy for an outside group to say, hey, look, these guys are, are, are the folks responsible for causing all the issues that you're seeing in the wild. Like all the fish dying, all the coral bleaching, it's these people that are directly involved in capturing fish breaking off corals from the reef, blah, blah, blah. And in their supply chain, look at how many corals and fish are dying as a result of these people. And then when you finally look at these people, sure enough, we keep all these things in these small glass aquariums or worse in nano and pico reefs. So it's a very easy target that we've put on ourselves. Uh, next up, 52. So um, the last thing I've really seen, like the, the, the people that are most advocating like banning the hobby altogether um, was like a I guess like a scuba dive company in Hawaii you know they, they make like um, like documentaries and stuff like that about how terrible the, the reef aquarium trade is and you know and, and so their livelihood is dependent on, on a nice natural reef and again it's a, it's an easy scapegoat so I, I think every year um, there's legislation proposed in the U.S. anyways to ban collection and ban the hobby outright. So it usually doesn't go anywhere, but that's usually where that, that comes from. What else are you drinking, fam? Um, I'm drinking water now in my fake Yeti. Next up, uh, 53. <clears throat> I'm already over the free shipping barrier. I'm now approaching the missing my mortgage barrier. That happens. That happens. Um, let's see. Favorite maker of T5? ATI? Yeah, ATI is generally what I go with. Um, my two favorite bulbs that ATI makes. Like, I like the color combination of Blue Plus and Coral Plus. And, a th and my third choice would be Actinic, but it's not the most attractive looking. It's just the one that does the most.
Next up, 54. <clears throat> and going back to Joy's question, um, it, that's not to say that, like, the Reef Aquarium hobby is, like, unfairly targeted. There's some crappy people in this industry that, like, do really crappy practices that probably do um, deserve every bit of the criticism that this hobby gets. So, I mean, we certainly can do everything better. And that's kind of, if you haven't noticed, a lot of our channel is about doing this entire hobby better. And, you know, we're not perfect about whatever it is we do. For example, I'm a terrible clam dad. I do not keep clams here very well, well or very, for very long. And um, it's something that I work on, but it, it is not going well. Like, we don't have any clams anymore. We tried. Right, let's go to 55. Larger green pavona. It looks blue under this light for some reason, but it is definitely a green pavona. I'll be perfectly honest, it looks a little bit better in this in, in what you're seeing online than it, than it does typically in person. Have you seen the new Maxpec Gyre pumps and controllers 200 series? Um, I think we have it. Like about three weeks ago, I purchased a 250. I think it's like the second largest one, whatever number that is. Let's go to 56. This is an, an, an actual blue Pavona. So yeah, it's definitely more blue. They have a green rim as well, which is kind of neat. Um, yeah, so the gyre, I was really impressed by how powerful it was. Like when we first put it in, I'm like, yeah, just go ahead. And, since it's in an eight foot long tank, I'm like, go ahead and crank that thing up to 100%. And it's probably undersized anyway, so let's just crank it up to 100%. It's in an 8-foot long tank. It'll be fine. No. It was... It basically turned that tank into a river. So strong. So uh, we have it backed all the way down to about 30%. So I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, last time I, I brought this pump up, though, somebody said, have fun trying to clean it out. I have not cleaned it out or tried to maintain it yet, so he might be right on that. Okay, let's go to 57. It's a slightly larger blue pavona. Do you feed the coral before the show? Um, yeah, about a, uh, maybe three hours before. <clears throat> Can you share what camera you use for the auctions? Um, it is a Canon C100. It is a entry level cinema camera. Okay, 58. And we're using the Canon 100mm macro lens for this. Dan, why do you have problems with clams? I don't know. They just die. Like, the, the, last, the last thing that happened was very, very strange. We had about maybe like four or five clams, and they literally all died within 48 hours of each other. So I'm wondering if it's like a matter of... So, so we dip a lot of our corals and stuff like that. And I'm wondering if like some of the chemicals just like from, from the dipping process, just gets into the water and even like a little bit of that poisons the clams or something. I, I, I'm not really sure what happened, but they all croaked. Okay, let's go to 59. We also changed lighting. They might not have liked the change in lighting. I, I doubt that. It's probably something else that we've, we've been doing just in the way of, of maintenance. Which gyre? I, what, what's the number in the box there, Luke? Right here. We just happen to have the box near, but it's the 200. So yeah, it's the it's uh, so Northwest Marine 62. It's it's the two, XF 200, I believe. Okay, let's go to number 60. Any Duncans? You missed all the Duncans. The Duncans were number 40 something. 46 and 47. 46 and 47. Specific gravity may not have helped. That's true. I mean, our specific gravity was high, but at the same time, they all died like instantly, and we've had them for months. Problem with Zoa is not opening. All other corals are fine. Chances are they're being eaten by something, whether it's a snail or a slug, but something is probably eating them. Uh, Dan, Kindred. Okay, next up, 61. Uh, let's see. Have you experimented with carbon dosing? We have experimented with it and it kind of went poorly. Uh, we got a lot of cyano. Some corals died, so we stopped. But we were doing like a pretty brute force method. 
Whereas I've seen other folks do carbon dosing a lot better than we've than our implementation of it. Like you have to understand when you're talking about like thousand gallon aquariums, um, it's a little bit of a rougher thing to do anything at a high level. So um, folks like customers of ours that have home aquariums that have done carbon dosing well have gotten great results. And one of them is doing Zeovit. He's having great results. So. I, I certainly think it, it can be done and can be done well. We've experimented with it and did not have great results. Let's go to 62. That's an orchid favites. <clears throat> so, okay, this is interesting. Miss Saltwater Tank. Have you guys started Christmas shopping or are you waiting for Black Friday like me? I thought Black Friday was a uniquely American thing associated with Thanksgiving. Also a uniquely American thing. So if, for, for those of you that don't know, Miss Saltwater Tank is over in England. So yeah, I'm kind of curious as to how, like, is that like a thing worldwide now? Is like, a, are people just like, have like a day of rampant consumerism all around like December 28th-ish? I guess, apparently. Next coral up is going to be uh, an anti-venom favites. Black Friday sales. Is there a way to tell if two corals are burning each other? Not until it's too late, unfortunately. Van likes UFC? I do. I, I do like combat sports. If, if I was younger, I would probably be doing something like that. Uh, I mean, like, in, in my younger days, I was actually into martial arts. And given the chance to do some sort of stupid cage fight, I probably would have done it. Because I would have been stupid. And 19. Uh, any experience with Aquaforce? Not me. It's, I think it's like a, a European brand that I have not played around with too much. Uh, okay, next up, 64, Pinstripe Favia. Black Friday in BC as well, British Columbia. Okay. So, okay, I know folks here, um, some people like to go crazy for Black Friday. They camp out, you know, 3 a.m., waiting to barge down the doors of Walmart to sprint to the electronic section and get that $10 HD TV or whatever because I, I, I say HDTV as if it's actually barely HD I mean it's probably the cheapest TV ever made and they're selling it to you for a low price because it's complete garbage and it's probably a TV that you don't even really want to spend money on but it's so cheap that you have to run and trample your fellow humans to go try to get it um, I'm not into that whole scene I want to stay home on that day I don't want to be a part of a, a retail riot Number 65, however, what I did do was I pretty much um, did my shopping in advance, meaning like there's these certain items that I would like to purchase and I just put it on my calendar to check the various websites that sell these things and see if there's a deal on it for Black Friday. Yeah, Aqua Forest does seem a lot like Z of it. I, I kind of assumed it was the same sort of thing. Um, and with Zeovit or anything like that, you can get crazy colors in these corals. And I'm not always 100% certain if that's a healthy thing for those corals. Um, I don't know how many of you guys like do a lot of diving into the, into the natural reefs and stuff like that. But oftentimes what makes for a healthy reef does not necessarily make for the most aesthetic looking home aquarium. So yeah, sometimes the things that like bring out the, the, the most insane colors at home might actually be hurting the corals. I'm not really sure. It's it's a it's a much more in-depth uh, coral biology question that I'm just not prepared to to answer. What happened to the fish that jumped out of the tank during the Halloween live show? It's like fine, handled it fine. Okay, so which one is this? 66. Okay, 66. You have to let me know when you switch, okay? <clears throat> Yeah, that fish is fine. The fish that are here, um, like the most number of years, they tend to do really well. Newly added fish, it's always a bit of an adventure, keeping those alive. 
Okay, next up, 67. Our Black Friday is not as aggressive. People die, people die yeah, people die all the time here. I mean, think about that for just a sec. There's people that die shopping. Shopping. For, st for stuff. How's the new T5 fixture? I happen to like them quite a lot. Next up, 68. So I kind of have to, to, to raz some of the folks. Because like when I initially put out that video, I didn't put a link or anything like that. Because it's like, I just assumed that if you'd like go to Amazon and you type in T5 fixture, you would probably find it within 10 seconds. But everybody was like on my case about, can you put a link? Link, link, why didn't you put a link? Why are you being such a jerk? You didn't put a link. So, what I did was I signed up to be an Amazon affiliate. And so, I created an affiliate link. So if you guys need a link, I expect to get paid for it if you guys purchase that light. So now, anytime I talk about any product on Amazon, I will put an affiliate link. So if you guys want to make that search on your own, feel free. If you need my help, click on the affiliate link that I'll be posting. I am disappointed in your guys' ability to Google a horticultural light on Amazon, I guess. Shame. Okay, next up, 69. Oh, Robbie is watching Game of Thrones, but he's not at that point yet in the series. But shame, shame. <laughs> That's totally a thing. But long story short, I really do like these new T5 fixtures. None of them have broken just yet. Um, I expect to get a few more before it's all said and done. Let's go to number 70. So we're into the SPS. I don't know who it was, but somebody was asking about a little bit about it earlier. I am watching my first live show on my new smart TV. Welcome. Yeah, I'm all T5 and my corals grow like crazy. Yeah, it's growth, but I mean, a lot of things can grow corals. Like I said, it's like growth is like a low standard of success. Of success. I really want to try to get better colors. Um, these Montipora that you're seeing here, they're relatively new additions and they're still in the process of coloring up. Next up, 71. It's the green Montipora digitata. Oh, I started watching Black Sails on your advice. Watched the first two seasons so far. Man, I am so pumped for that show. It, it, they're going into their fourth and final season. And I am all about it. I love that show. I, I like Black Sails more than I like Game of Thrones. And I don't know if you guys watch Black Mirror. I think it started off as like a BBC show. And I think the last season was picked up by Am by Netflix. But I love Black Mirror. It's kind of like a modern day um, Twilight Zone that kind of explores like this uncomfortable, um, like possible futures as a result of technology. And yeah, so if you can check out Black Mirror, there's like every single episode is like a self-contained story. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting and the idea is to get you to that point of discomfort, just to warn you, but I, I love Black Mirror. Okay, uh, 72, this is a plating, that's like a pink plating, Monty? Yeah, Black Mirror, I see some Black Mirror fans. Yeah, I, I binge watch the hell out of Black Mirror, which is saying a lot because I think each episode is like an hour or like an hour and a half. I binge watched the hell out of that. I um, I think one night I stayed up till about 3 a.m. watching Black Mirror. Let's go to 73. This is a Montepore Satosa. Any Scolies? Uh, no, no Scolies on this show. 
Yeah, so my, my TV recommendations, if you haven't watched already, Black Sails would be number one. It's on Stars and on <clears throat> clandestine pirate channels. And then um, Black Mirror, which I believe is on Netflix or other channels that require you some Google searching. Uh, okay, 74. It's a slightly larger Montipora Setosa. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's go to 75. The John Hamm episode was great. I literally just watched that last night. It's like the it's like the Christmas special. Yes, yeah, very good. And they have they have great actors on those shows, like all the different Black Mirror episodes. Okay. So, I'm going to hang out here on 75 for just a minute. I need to go use the bathroom. Be back. And I'm back. All right, let's see here. You're on 76? Great. Okay. All right, I'm catching up a little bit here on the chat. Do you have any frog spawn? I think there's only one so far. It was in the 40s. It was number 40, exactly. The boss left. There are no rules. I have no idea what, what happened when I was gone. So hopefully nothing too bad. So uh, speaking of bad, <laughs> the personal trainer, Sean, uh, he plays movies uh, in the gym for us. And it's usually like his choice. So it's a lot of... Uh, a lot of comic book move type movies, you know, a lot of DC animated stuff. You know, they, they watch like the Shallows. Okay, by the way, if you watch the Shallows, it's the uh, Blake Lively movie about about uh, her getting chased by a shark after she went um, surfing. I couldn't get into it because everything about that movie was wrong. Like, she's supposed to be in Mexico. And I've been to Mexico. And... Immediately, it's like, that landscape doesn't look right for Mexico. Mexico is very flat right, over, right around there. Then I look at the waves. It's like, those waves are not Mexican waves. Those waves are way too big. You can't really surf off the coast of Mexico very easily. Then, like, there's a scene where, like, like uh, they go underwater. And I'm like, those corals are not Mexican corals. This is not in the Caribbean at all. And sure enough, we look it up. It's like in, uh, what do you call it? It's, it's filmed in Australia. Like, that makes much more sense. And then the shark itself is a great white. And I'm like, there's no, there's no, there's no great whites off the coast of Mexico in the summer. It's ridiculous. So 78, let's go to 78. So, so I could not suspend disbelief. And the only thing that made it worthwhile was seeing Blake Lively in a very, very, very small swimsuit for about two hours. Other than that, I could, I couldn't do it. I'm like, there's nothing, there's nothing right about this movie. They couldn't get any of this right. Yeah, I don't know. Some, something about a seagull. The seagull is probably the best part of that movie. Best actor. Best actor. 79. Let's 
go to the purple plating, Monty. Okay, but uh, going back to the Deshaun plus bad, uh, he decided to put on Sausage Party at the gym. And I told him, I told him not to do it, because it's like, you shouldn't really watch this, show this movie or watch this movie with anyone that you're not comfortable watching porn with that person. And he didn't listen. He played that movie at the gym, and I think there's like a mass exodus of clients that night. I wasn't there. Number 80. Okay, <clears throat> let's go to 81. So my former, okay, so speaking of Harry Potter, my former business partner, he has a stepdaughter that's really into Quidditch in college. It's been a while since I've been in college, but I guess there's actually like an organized sport where people run around a field with a broom between their legs, kind of like galloping along and they're and they're like catching some guy that's like painted gold or something and this is totally like a college sport and they play other colleges at Quidditch so I guess that's a thing and that's how you know you've gotten too old because you just don't understand anymore you don't understand how the world got this way all right let's go to 82 Is that the um, Fantastic, Beasts. Fantastic Beasts? Okay. Next up, 83. I haven't been into the Harry Potter series as much as some of the other series that are out there. And I haven't seen Doctor Strange yet, which I hear is pretty good. There's a bunch of movies that I wanted to see, but I just haven't. Like, um, I wanted to see The Accountant, that Ben Affleck movie, but I heard that was just okay. What's Cody? Cody. Is it super illegal? No. Is it kind of illegal? Whatever you do. Oh, that's super illegal. <laughs> All right, next up, 84. Is it just a website? That's illegal. <laughs> Next up, 85. Dan, have you tried the beer yet? Hoof arted, uh, hoof arted. I have not yet. Um, I know some folks were talking about that during like the Halloween live show. Um, I have not tried it yet. Uh, see, okay, believe it or not, I mean, I, I drank like two beers today just to, you know, again, create some real estate in my fridge, but. I don't drink a whole lot, so when it comes to like trying a, a ton of beers, not quite so much. Okay, next up, 86. First rule of Cody is you don't talk about Cody. Yeah. All right, let's go to 87. It's a rainbow Monty. So old man me, old man Than, has gotten into um, audiobooks. Like, I'm big time into audiobooks now. I set up a, an Audible account, and I'm like, man, I've been missing out. This is like the coolest thing ever. And so I've uh, the first book that I listened to was The Count of Monte Cristo, which is like legit... 50 something hours of of book reading I guess and then uh, I started into uh, the Dark Tower series because I hadn't read Stephen like the Stephen King Dark Tower series at all and they're making a movie of it so I kind of wanted to get up to, up to speed so I'm almost done with the first book of Dark Tower and I do like it it's quite good next up 88 
a slightly larger Rainbow Monty. Does this thing look good under the flashlight? I bet it does. Yeah, these are pretty sweet. Than for a four bulb T5 fixture, what bulbs would you run? Coral plus, blue plus? Yes, coral plus and blue plus. Purple plus, definitely no. Purple plus is my probably my least favorite ATI bulb. So I do half purple plus, er, derp, half coral plus, half blue plus. That's what I would do. Can we come to Tidal Gardens or just online? Um, there's no open hours or anything like that, but we do have visitors by appointment. We are mainly an online company. Okay, next up, 89. Some Superman Montes, which are coloring up great. Need an audiobook narrated by Morgan Freeman. It wouldn't be surprising to me if he did. There, there are some actors that do um, voiceovers for those audiobooks. Next up, 90. But the thing is, like, the really good um, audiobook people, like the voice actors for that, are, like, really, really good. So they do all the different characters. And they do all the different characters in different voices, including, like, males and females. So, for example, the guy that did Count of Monte Cristo, I could, def I could tell exactly who was speaking just by the guy's change in voice. And there's, like, I don't know, 20 different characters, like, like, like uh, that have, like, major speaking roles and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, like the guys that do these audiobooks are like, the range is way past what a normal, like, theatrical actor would, would do. And some of these, uh, these audiobooks have, like, more than one person, but, like, I'm, I'm almost more impressed by the one that has, like, only one narrator. So I think you have to cut down on the light a lot, because it's kind of blown out. There you go. Yeah, in order to actually see the colors on these guys. No. It's dark, but once you shine the, the, the light on it and see the fluorescence. Have you showed soft corals yet? No, not really. They're coming up. Not soon, but they are coming up. Why about the purple plus? Because of growth or aesthetics? Aesthetics. I, I just don't like that bulb. Right, no, go to 92. It's a neon green Ganyapora. These guys aren't super extended, but then again, it's right underneath that pump that we were talking about, that, um, that Max Spect Gyre. Ninety-three. Okay. Ninety-four. So Ganyapura in general have a really bad reputation for survival, but I think a lot of it is just species related. Um, certain species just simply do better than others. And so far, these have done well. I mean, we've been propagating them and everything. Hmm? Yeah, they healed well and they're actually growing and everything. Look great. Rainbow Gani or Rainbow Monty? Well, we should both. We almost, we showed them back to back, in fact, practically, practically, yeah. Okay, next up, 95. We're into our SPS, this is a yellow bird's nest.
Next up, 96. <clears throat> it's interesting to see, I'm kind of like scatterbrained here, but how uh, that, that YouTuber challenge has gone, how it's spread. I don't even know who started it, but it's pretty much encompassed like just about everyone, I think. Next up, 97. Temperature is always good in the greenhouse. It's nice in here right now. It feels good. Because like outside, not so good. Let's uh, crank up the exposure just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. A little bit more. That looks good. Yes. Yeah, the greenhouse is very comfortable. And it's nice and humid and everything. As soon as you go outside, it's like, man, it sucks. It sucks bad. All right, 98. It's another pink bird's nest. Ah, it's a tough decision I meant between the two. If you had to go between the two, uh, we have rainbow Montes more often than we do the rainbow Ghanis. Yeah. But... The Rainbow Monty is my favorite Montipora, period, end of story. All right, next up, 99. Next will be the Mannequin Challenge. There's, there's, there's nobody here. <laughs> nobody... We don't do yeah, we don't do anything here. Ugh. I don't think Malev was too happy you calling him out. Well, see, okay, let's go to 100. This is the second of, of the Birds of Paradise here. Um, so he's like, you know, gee, Than, thanks for throwing me under the bus. And I'm like, well, the way that I would phrase it, it's more like a sexually transmitted disease and how this spreads. <laughs> So I gave out, so I, I, I helped propagate this, this, this wave of, of YouTuber STDs. <laughs> Next up, 101. How hard is a rainbow Monty to keep? Uh, as far as SPS goes, it's, it's about middle of the road. You want to give it high flow highlight. Actually, I loved getting called out by uh, the person that nominated me was Matt from uh, from the Jayo Nation. Um, he's 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 a, an American dude over in in China that has a reef aquarium, and it's because sometimes it's hard to come up with a, a thing to do a video about. So I'm like, oh, I get to answer ten questions. Let's do it because I have no, I have nothing else going through my head reef related right now. Okay, next up, 102. How many games do you think the Cleveland Cavs will last with the Warriors in the playoffs this season? Um, the Warriors, my friend, Bay Area Reefs, <laughs> they are a turned ankle away from getting eliminated in the first round. So, it's a long season. I have no idea. I'm just going to say, like, if Draymond Green happens to turn his ankle in the in the in the in the playoffs, y'all are losing to the Clippers. <laughs> we'll throw that out there. <laughs> but then again, if LeBron turns his ankle, we're not even gonna get to the first round of the playoffs. So there's that. You can watch Kyrie and Kevin Love put up great numbers and lose. Okay, next up, 103. And the playoffs are just a different animal, like. Things just happen. Like in, in last year's playoffs, Kevin Durant totally like peed the bed when he when the Oklahoma City Thunder were up three one. Like he kind of like wilted and really unexpectedly. So yeah, it's like the playoffs are just a weird thing. Anything can happen. <clears throat> Next up. 104. 
Gym. What Kessel and Tank Death? Hmm. Are we going to be going into 105 next? Okay. So what's the uh, what's the score of the? Uh, in the fourth? Huh. And who has the ball? It would be a shame if they lost by a field goal at the end of the clock. Like like another team I saw. The Cavs have been cursed by the Kardashians, so yeah. So, supposedly Tristan Thompson dumped her. Okay, so I, I really don't have anything against the Kardashians. Um, but I have to say that there's like a particularly mean chant that, uh, that some city was doing. Um, but they were chanting Ugly Sister <laughs> about Khloe Kardashian. I mean, I get it that she doesn't look like Kim Kardashian, but Khloe Kardashian is not an ugly girl. Like, next up, 106. And I don't think anybody would doubt that, like, Khloe Kardashian is the cool one, whereas the other Kardashians are less cool. Like, like just to say, if, if I was to hang out with any Kardashian, I would want to hang out with Khloe Kardashian over the other two. But that's just me. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe if I hung out with Kim, I get to meet Kanye, and that is gonna go extremely poorly. <laughs> oh man. Next up, 107. Why are you mad at Kanye? Kanye's like he said he said nice things about Trump, and uh, he got he got chewed up by Twitter about it like yesterday or something. What, they booed him when he said no, he good things about Trump? Oh, really? Wow. Best placement for a stylo. Luke's got you covered on that. Yeah, really? That's mean. Yeah, kind of. What happened to drag racing clowns chasing children with riding alpacas? It's... A, a, a winter wasteland outside. There's no life outside of this greenhouse. It's all dead. 108. All the children are dead. All the alpacas are dead. They're all gone. No more clowns. Yeah, and that's another thing. There's no more clowns because it's too damn cold for this stuff anymore. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for this. <laughs> it's like this isn't fun when it's like 10 degrees outside. All right, let's go to 109. Dylan, I came at the end of this, huh? Second half. We're, we're a little bit past the halfway point. Damn, Than knows his Kardashians. I do get the two youngest Jenners mixed up, though. Yeah, I don't know which one's which. I think Kylie Jenner is the one that has, like, a lot of plastic surgery. They're both like the Instagram person. Hmm. Hmm. Next up, 110. Okay, let's go to 111. We've had these particular Acropora forever. I mean, even like when we had like plague issues here and everything like that, and some dieback from uh, from summertime. Like historically speaking, we were never able to keep Acropora alive here. Like they would, there would be some season that comes along that just wipes them all out. So year after year, we get a little bit better, and so it, they're actually kind of nice this year. Next up, 112. By the way, if you hear a grown man crying in the background, it's just Luke. 
because Ohio State might be losing. That's a weird thing about sports. It's like you have no control whatsoever about it, and then, but you're so emotionally invested in it. Next up, 113. How are you guys prepared for the preparing for the dreaded holidays? So Ohio State apparently won. I'm not that crazy about that outcome. <laughs> Next up, 114. Uh, how are we preparing for the dreaded holidays? We don't really have to prepare for much. Okay, so here's the thing. We're an online company, right? Most of the stuff we, we ship out. Half of December we can't ship because of the FedEx holiday schedule. So it's basically a vacation for us. Next up, 115. So we used to have like, well, we used to just have like what we called a pink phospholipora. But it turns out that there's some that are more pink than others and some that are more purple than others. So we kind of separated it out a little bit. How old are these pieces you're selling? Jeez, I have no idea. All I know is that when it comes to like Pasolipora, jeez, years, I don't even remember when we got them. I don't know where we got them. I don't know when we got them. But if we were to put them all together, there's probably, we have probably like eight square feet of Pasolipora. It's, we've had them forever. Okay, next up, 116. Certain ones are newer, like a couple of the uh, Montipora were newer. Some of the Acros and stuff like that are years old. And again, after a while, you, I lose track of, of when and where's for a lot of them. Okay, next up, 117. It's, it's a combination. There's uh, on the right, which is this, it's, yeah, okay, so on... Yeah, on this side of the of the plug, it's going to be like a rainbow, and on the other side, the left side, so uh, we have a, a green and then a multicolored, all in the same plug there. All right, number one eighteen. But you have dog walking injuries, and you've fallen over. I don't think you're supposed to fall over at work. Like, there's something wrong with this image that I have. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's like, unless you're like my age and you just fall over randomly, it's not good. Hmm. So this is 119, it's a toxic green platy. It's a super bright, like, inner um, area around the polyp, on the actual, uh, on the mouths, I should say. Okay, next up, 120. The thing I'm most worried about, as far as, like, pets go, is, like, my cats. They like to run down the stairs right when I'm walking down the stairs. And in the mornings, it is actually like hard for me to get down the stairs sometimes because it's like all my, all my like joints and everything just hurt. So I'm like hobbling down the stairs and these cats are like zipping right in front of my feet. And so I'm just thinking one of these days, I'm gonna trip over one of my cats and you'll never hear from me again. It's both of them. That's probably more like Penny. Have you seen how, how, how big and heavy Piper is? She's 15 pounds now. She's like on steroids. Okay, next up, 121.
Okay. 122. So these guys, I, I may have mentioned it in past streams, but they uh, they form like a like a cup. It's a scroll coral. Um, and the more light that you provide, the more yellow they look. So we keep these under like somewhat lower lighting, um, probably 50, 60 ish par. And so they develop mostly like a purple base and yellow polyps. Under really bright lighting, they can almost develop an entirely like yellow polyp, yellow based look. I've been meaning to ask, my shop got a Rhizotrochus. Apparently there's only 20 that get allowed in the States per year. Uh, I don't know about the importing thing about those. They're, they are rare. I mean, it's like if you imagine a big dendrophilia, it's like a non-photosynthetic, very, um, I guess, aggressive carnivorous coral. That's basically what that is. Next up, 123. They come in pretty cool colors, they're really expensive. Um, I've never had one. So we're into the Sephastrias. These guys like much lower light, in case you were wondering. Okay, let's go to 124. That's not it. <laughs> That's a snail. This is a meteor shower Sephastria. And the last coral in this particular side is 125, and that's a marbled Sephastria. Okay. So, we're gonna uh, have to switch around here for a sec. So, quickly, let me go over the rules for the folks that haven't, um, that are not too familiar with how this works. So, uh, you can watch the stream live on YouTube. And if you wanted to actually purchase corals, and this, unfortunately, guys, it's, it's for the U.S. only, uh, you, have to, you have to go to titlegardens.com, and there's a live sale link. And that's where you can see all the, all the different corals that are available. And so it's like a numbered list. Um, shipping, the way that shipping works, it's a flat rate $39.99, and it's free after uh, $250. So one thing to consider is that to actually get the coral, you have to check out with it. So if there's like um, a lot of uh, demand for a particular coral, it's probably better to try to, sh to, to check out each time that you purchase and just make sure that shipping is included one time. Um, if you happen to pay for shipping twice, don't worry about it. We refund that. And uh, what else? Uh, yeah, and just so you to avoid getting uh, multiple charges for shipping, select local pickup slash live sale. Okay. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys are familiar with those rules. Uh, as far as like the Patreon crowd, thank you guys so much. Uh, these guys um, have donated at the $5 per, mo or per month or per video, I forget what it is. Um, and so they get a shout out during our live shows and on some other videos. So thank you, Jeff, Louise, Nathan, Phil, Jason, Dave, Nancy, and Ryan. And a few of these people are in chat currently, so thank you guys. All right, I am going to make a quick trip back out to use the bathroom. So uh, we're on number 126. I will be right back.
And I'm back. It is like so dark and gloomy outside. It's gross. This is my last piece. <sighs> All right, where are we? The beer is talking, I guess. All right, so uh, Luke is now on the camera duty and you're all now talking to Robbie, who is not a Trump supporter. Are you? You are? Are you really? You're, you're not kidding. Okay, there are two Trump supporters now on this stream. Robbie wants a purge. Have fun with that. <laughs> All right, so let's go to 127. It's beautiful in ATL, come on down. I've been meaning to make a, a trip down to the Georgia Aquarium for like forever, and I just haven't done it. If you don't like gloomy weather, it's the best. I guess I don't mind it, but it is, it's like really cold also. What are you eating? So this is a, a dried mango. I've, um, I looked at myself in the mirror yesterday and in this moment of self-reflection, I realized that my face is entirely way too fat. So it's one thing for a guy to like have a fat belly. It's an entire different thing when it's like, you know what? Your face is too fat. It's time to go on a diet. So. I'm eating uh, mostly a vegetarian diet now, but on top of that, I'm actually doing a juice fast. So I'm eating right now all the um, all the stuff I have left, and then from this point forward, I'm probably just gonna do my juice diet. I've done my juice diet diet thing before, and I, I actually really liked it. I'm just usually so busy that I, I lose track of that, and that's when I end up end, end up at like Wendy's or something but I'm gonna try to be more disciplined this time around. Okay, next up, 129. And if you can hear the greenhouse, that little staticky sound in the background, that's sleet from what I can tell. <laughs> Any advice for a new coral farmer? The, um, the easy thing, how are you? Um, Brick. The easy thing about coral farming is actually just the growing of coral part. The difficulty is the selling of coral part. So make sure to pay a lot of attention to that. Well, let's go to number 130. I like juices, but I never want them in winter. Yeah, I mean, for this particular juice fast, I'm probably just going to be doing like the like the fr like the fruit and vegetable juicing. Take my protein shake so I just don't shrink entirely and lose all, all my muscle. Um, and just really just keep it consistent with those two as much as I can. And I'll probably eat like a salad or something like that just to you know, just make sure I get like some roughage. But I mean, I'm not one of those people that has to have like a ton of meat all the time. Next up, 131. We would probably have to back it up as much as you can to, to get this whole thing in frame. My biggest thing about the juice, the whole juice fasting process is just getting the time to make the juice. I really like the juice itself. It's just, I, I end up not um, having the time where I get like, I lose track of time and then all of a sudden I'm starving and I'm right back at Wendy's. Those are trash. Yeah, those aren't really good. Okay, next up, 132. So I make my own like fresh squeezed juice because like uh, Robbie was saying, well, have you tried those naked juices? And I'm like, uh, those aren't actually really good at all. This winter I might try to do some hiking. I usually don't have any wintertime activities.
Have you cut out chocolate? I don't think I could give up chocolate. Well, I'm not huge on chocolate. I, I like chocolate, but I don't. I'm not addicted to it. I'm not. I'm not addicted to cheese, like some folks are. Dark chocolate's okay, like cocoa. Uh, it, it's all right. Um, I like coffee. I should probably cut down on coffee a little bit, but I really enjoy that. What's a neon green Neftia, if you didn't already know? 133. Next up, 134. That's a slightly larger neon green Neftia. You know, some people, they can't go like vegan or anything like that because of cheese. Like, that is just something that they can never uh, get, get away from. Next up, 135. And I love really good cheeses and stuff, but I, uh, luckily it's not like if, I, if I'm if i lacking it, all of a sudden I'm like, oh my god, there's something missing in my life. What is it? I have to go fix this problem. I don't get like that about cheese. And like when I say addicted to cheese, it's a that's a real thing. You can get addicted to cheese. It is there are addictive properties like at a chemical level when it comes to cheese. All right, next up, one thirty six. And if I was addicted to cheese, luckily at least I'm eating good cheese. There's like terrible cheese out there. That's like a, it's not really so much a cheese. It's like a cheese-like product that comes in a spray can or something. That's what you really want to be avoiding. That's not cheese. That's, I don't know what it is. Let's go to 137. It's a pink simularia. Um, so there's a, uh, there was some, some video I saw of like these ice cream sandwiches that are being sold at Walmart. And they, uh, they compared it to like real ice cream. And so this guy was in like Southern California. It's like 80 degrees outside. And he has like a bowl of ice cream and then one of these ice cream sandwiches. And this ice cream sandwich did not melt. Like after hours and hours and hours out in like in, in the Southern California sun, hot day, it didn't melt. And then somebody took it to the next level. They put it in a campfire. And this thing didn't melt in the campfire. <laughs> so like whatever the hell that was, it certainly was not ice cream. So there's a lot of food-like products that we get here in America. And like... I don't know. Next up, 138. This is a green cabbage. So uh, Luke is uh, addicted to Taco Bell. Taco Bell meat. I'm sure, pretty sure that might not be meat. Okay, let's go to 139. What's an ice cream sandwich? Um, they're really delicious. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like ice cream. It's like ice cream. It's, a, it's like ice cream. It's like this white, creamy, cold stuff. And I, like I said, it's probably not ice cream because it's not. It doesn't melt in a fire. But, and it's sandwiched between these two like wafer-like chocolate. Pads, kind of. It, it it's good. Um, you shouldn't you shouldn't use it as food though. American food has gotten really sketch. Yes. This guy's one forty. Okay. We have more scans coming up. Yoffer. English? English, Ravi? Uh-huh. Whatever Yoffer means. Next up, 141. Oh, really? Yeah. Yoffer? Oh. Okay. So, my bad, Yoffer. My bad. Yeah. I, I've gotten hit by the scans before. 
Next up, 142. Uh, somebody was asking about mushrooms earlier. We have uh, just a few and they're all Rodactuses. I'm addicted to Clash Royale. I haven't played Clash Royale. I play uh, Clash of Clans poorly. Okay, let's go to 143, the orange Redactus. <clears throat> okay, 144. Don't be surprised if you start seeing insanely priced Redactuses. I'm seeing a lot of different ones that are crazy, crazy expensive now. 145. Not necessarily here on this live show, but out in the wild. Just gonna say that. And I'm out of water. No more. Okay, let's go to 146. All right, next up, 147. So the, that stringiness that you're seeing coming off of that, that's it shedding. So uh, Gorgonians occasionally shed um, kind of like a thin layer uh, of, of like waxy film, I guess. And that's kind of to keep the, the algae from growing on and stuff like that. Oh, somebody had to bring up the Pokemon thing. So, so I don't know anything about this new game, but I did come across this new page on Facebook that I can't get enough of. Uh, it's called Wokemon, which is like this, uh, I guess like a, a social, um, social advocacy, political advocacy page. So it's like, you know, it's like the whole, you know, woke as in like you know politically aware that sort of thing but <laughs> it's woke on and like the, the symbol at the top of the page is like this triangle like this illuminati triangle with uh, like a pikachu eye <laughs> next up 148 is this a purple blade gorgonian Is one forty-seven photosynthetic? Yes, all of these Gorgonians are photosynthetic. They're all Atlantic. All right, let's go to one forty-nine. I wish I had the time to be like a video game streamer. I just don't, and I'm I'm, I'm sure you guys would be extremely entertained by me because I'm totally toxic when I'm online <laughs> doing that. All right, let's go to 150. I think this is the last of the Gorgonians. Yes, it is. Okay, let's let's go to 151. Noob mistake. He hit the end of the end of the thing and it resets. Do people still play Pokemon Go? Not nearly as much. No. I've never seen play the title gardens let's play. Oh, it wouldn't be rated PG thirteen, I can guarantee you that. Like people don't realize, but like in, in real life. I swear every other word. I'm I'm I am straight toxic. Like League of Legends with me, I'd get banned like instantly. Like, it's like like Tyler one, just get perma banned. All right, let's go to 152. 
to marbled Favia. I should just one of these days. Like I so since I don't actually play, I'm gonna be really bad. And I don't like being really bad at video games because I, I I remember from my youth. Remember that whole thing I was talking about earlier. Like whatever it is that you were doing at 18. Now that you're doing it at 40, you're terrible at it and whatever it was in your head. It's like, and that way about video games now too. So, I don't know. It could be, it could be bad. I, I'd be getting a lot of hate for my bad play and I would deserve it. Alright, next up, 153. Favia or Favides grow faster, Favides grows faster. Favia are some of the slowest. Alright, 154. I have to find like a relatively easy game that I could play. Not like Dark Souls or something like that. <laughs> Vainglory. But it has to be something that, that's actually fun to watch, too. Strangely, League Pokemon. is fun to watch. Pokemon's not fun to watch. Real? Yeah. League. League. I, I can't watch. I can't watch Overwatch. It's like, it's too much. OK, let's go to 155. A smaller Dragon Soul Favia. Um, I was actually thinking like maybe try to do something with VR. Like I was thinking about getting like a new laptop, which is the first non Macintosh laptop I'd be buying in forever um, that could handle VR. But then again, I was like, I saw some people like streaming VR, and it just looked not like a, not a great viewing experience for spectators. And I've never done VR, so maybe I'll just get motion sick and throw up. So there's that also. <laughs> Right next up, 156, especially if I'm drinking and then doing the VR, that, that, that could go poorly in a hurry. I can't do the, I, I, I can't do the scary games, I, see, but then again, I've, I've never tried it. I've, I've never played like Amnesia. Yeah. It'd be me with a lot of swearing, and then one of my cats will just jump on the screen, and I, I get extra freaked out. All right, next up, 157. All right, let's go to 158. Dan just wants porn in VR. Uh, nah, no one's gonna ban you for that. By the way, that's that that's gonna be a thing. Just, just saying. Not that I'll be streaming, but <laughs> it'll be a thing. 159. These are walking dendros, so I should probably say something about these guys. Um, they kind of look like. Uh, Kind of like a like a mini elegance slash Duncan, but right at the bottom, um, there's like a little hole, and in that hole lives a peanut worm. And the, the reason why they call it a walking dendro is that peanut worm is actually able to move this whole coral around, and so the, these kind of you know keep clustered up in small groups, and they kind of like scurry around the substrate. Okay, one sixty. And that was the last of the uh, walking dendros. And we're moving on to some blastos in a second here. So the next one's gonna be 161, a Welsey. Yeah, I've never done a, uh, a haunted house either. Never done one. For what's it in the Guinness? Factory of Terror. Factory of Terror. It's in Cleveland? It's in Canton. Canton. Why is it in the Guinness Book of World Records? It's the longest, best rated one for your running. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. We went this year for two hours to get 
Hmm. I don't know if I can make it two hours in a haunted house. All right, let's move on to 162. So in general, um, Blastamusa are gonna want lower light, lower flow. Okay, next up, 163. It's a red Merletti. The Merlettis tend to grow a little bit faster than the Wellsies I've seen. A little bit more hardy. Land of Illusions in Cincinnati, never heard of that. I haven't heard of any of these things. I saw some, I remember seeing some random like blog post of like the most um, disturbing ones that uh, that that are in existence, and some of them are, look like it's basically saw. It's like pretty bad. So I'm like, ah, I don't know. And, like some of these things just might be too edgy for me. All right, 164. Alright, next up, 165. This is not a purple Pope organ. It's a purple pipe organ, so let me fix that real quick. Purple pipe. Alright. Next up, 166. This is a Blue Ridge Coral. All right, moving on, 167. This is a Neon Green Galaxia. These guys have Sweeper Tentacles, so you have to give them plenty of room. So, yeah, somebody was asking about uh, ACANs. We're going to go through a whole bunch of them here, okay? Kind of rapid fire. Some of these are, are rainbow, some of them are not. Um, yeah, we're going to just go through and see some of these. That's a pretty nice, and, and they're various sizes. They're not, not all going to be like triple digits here. But this, this ACAN, for example, I think looks completely ridiculously cool. Um, yeah, and, and they're all just going to be called ACAN Lords. I'm not really going to try to come up with different names for all these guys. Next up, 169. We're making pretty good time here, which I'm happy about. It's, it's almost 4 o'clock, so we've been going now for about 2 hours. Next up, 170. Can you try to focus a little bit on the uh, in inside of the, like the mouth area? Perfect. Yeah, because sometimes there's like a, some, some extra colors going on in there. All right, let's go to 171. We'll get there in a sec. It will be a $50 piece. Yeah, it depends on what, what, what uh, coloration a lot of these guys take on. There's some really expensive A cans out there. So we have a little bit of a mix. Anything from 50 to like a hundred and something dollars here. Depending on size and coloration. Yeah, these are all lords. These are all lords that we're going through here. What species of Aiken has heads separated like a blasto? Um, I don't think that there are any. They all kind of grow in a tight cluster like that. Mm. It's 
go to 172. This guy could be interesting with the with the flashlight. So this just goes to show you what a difference lighting makes on, on these different guys. Um, and also the thing to, to make to be aware of when you're talking about ACANs is that um, their coloration can change quite a lot just by how they develop colors under different lighting. I found that like low powered T5 does really well for them. Um, but to, to show off all this ridiculous color, some blue LEDs is really nice for that. Okay, next up, 173. This is a lot more fiery orange looking. Okay, next up, 174. So this guy might actually have some rainbow going on as well in the middle. Um, yeah, a little bit. It's mostly red, but I'm, I'm, like the the polyps on like the left there, you can see, has a whole bunch of other other colors going on. Again, like lighting uh, is gonna develop all of these guys differently. So it might turn into something better. Always a possibility. All right, next up, 175. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good deal for 125, <laughs> looking at it now. Like under like that LED, I probably should have charged more, but it's 125. And there's like a ton of polyps on that guy. Why do some Acans permanently have their sweeper tentacles out? A lot of times it's just like a feeding response and the, and the better that feeding response is, they, they stay out longer and more often. So chances are if you have a, if you see one um, that almost always has its tentacles out, it's, it means that it's been fed regularly for a long time and that's actually also a good sign. All right, let's go to 176. This is another rainbow. Yeah, that's a pretty slick one too. Smaller, but it's definitely cool coloration. All right, let's go to 177. Yeah, a lot of Acans this, this this time around. It's nice. Like some, it's like feast or famine. Sometimes we have a lot of them. Sometimes we don't. All right, let's move on to 178. One of the, I guess one of the lower priced rainbows at 50. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with all, all of these A-cans. I mean, usually um, it, it's been a while since we've been able to get great coloration out of, out of A-cans, but I think it might have been this, you know, this movement towards T5 that's helped a bit. All right, let's go to 179. So these are some of the more, um, I wouldn't say common ACANs, but it's like, you know, like the, the green pinwheels and stuff like that. So a little bit lower price point. Um, obviously still big, healthy pieces. How fast do they grow? It's, it's tough to say. I mean, they're not the slowest growing by any stretch. They just add additional heads. Um, you could like double or triple their size in a year or two. Then again, they could just die. So it's, it's like kind of that give and take. It's like, yeah, they, they grow fine unless they die. Um, next up, 180. Oh, this is a cool one. It's probably like red and blue. Yeah. That's actually real cheap at 45. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually... So, so so some of them are, are, are not necessarily rainbows, but have cool coloration nonetheless.
Alrighty, let's go to 181. Man, some of these ACANs look like straight up from an LSD trip or something. I wish. It would save me the hassle of going getting LSD. Alright, and I think that is the last of the ACAN, so hope you guys like that. All, all the ACAN lovers out there, we got a bunch of them for you. Uh, we are moving on to Zoas. So, um, it, it's a mix, but yeah, like 50 to 100 is like a safe range. Okay, 183. Use some gauntlets. They're not quite open. Green rims, a little bit of a like a touch of orange in the middle. And unfortunately, not every single polyp on this guy's open just yet. Next up, 184. Some Agent Orange. All right, 185. These are like all Green Bay Packers, except for one, it looks like a radioactive dragon eye. Okay, next up, 186. Some cat's eyes. Not really sure what these are. I think that we just kind of threw something together for them. Not sure what the, what the na actual name is. All right, next, 187. Okay, let's go to 188, I believe. Yeah, I don't know what those are. Um, they kind of look like Leonardo's, but it's slightly different. A little bit brighter. Next up, 189. These are some Fiji hyper colors. Uh, is number thirty six still available? I don't know. Um, if you if the number is not if the number is no longer there on the website, then it is gone. Somebody's picked it up already. I typically it's gone. Uh, sorry, sorry, John, it's gone. Um, yeah, I don't even look at anything related to this live sale for the rest of this evening. Like. So if you have if you have questions like burning questions, I'm sorry, I don't typically get to it this evening. I'm like I am shutting this down. Uh, okay, let's go to 190. Oh, I should say, um, most of these orders are going to be going out on Monday for delivery Tuesday. Uh, some of them might have to be shifted over from for Tuesday for delivery Wednesday, for the simple fact that I physically cannot pack the corals fast enough to do it all in one day. Sometimes. Yes, I need help. Okay, next up, 191. These are some Keds Reds. Yeah, I, I, I would say that like the, um, the, the most we've ever sent out in one day was like 20 boxes. It's a ton to do. I mean, just like the, 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 the packing materials for it all, it takes about a couple hours, two, three hours just to print all that, let alone grabbing all the corals into the box, blah, blah, blah. All right, next up, 192. Oh, 
almost to the end here. I hear purple deaths are more dangerous than your typical pallies. Not sure. I'll come work for frags. You would not be the first one to work for frags here. <laughs> that 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 that's a thing. Next up, one ninety three. Yeah, I don't know why this guy's all covered in bubbles, but he is. Yeah, turn out that, that, that micro bubble method, I guess, by accident. All right, number 194. Yeah, and you see, the, the, the coral right next to it doesn't have any bubbles. Like, how, how's that? Like, on either side of that particular coral has no bubbles, but then... Strange. Strange. One ninety five. These are some Fiji rainbows. Okay, next up, one ninety six. Don't know what these guys are. Kind of like a mottled blue face, uh, red rim. All right, then I think we just have some inexpensive pallies to uh, to finish this out. So 197 are some green pallies, some green button polyps. No more beer. Not at the greenhouse, unfortunately. Now I'm pretty I'm pretty stone sober at this point. Next up, 198. Another uh, set of green pallies. All right, 199 are some Jack Frost Pallies. And lastly, number 200. And that does it for the live show as far as the corals go. So I'm gonna throw up the uh, the Patreon folks, throw up the Patreon folks, <laughs> put up the overlay for Patreon that shows our uh, our donors here. So thanks you guys so much, um, and thanks obviously for you guys joining in. Hope you guys had a good time during the live show. Uh, let's see, any last minute questions? Nuclear green. I had to get those out of my tank. Um. I like nuclear greens. We don't really have that many of them. We haven't sold them in a while. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm definitely not going to get crunk. That's not what old people do, I guess. So yeah, not bad. We uh, spent about two hours and 15 minutes. A little bit... So usually we, we hang out for about, like, what, close to three hours. So this is definitely like a shorter live show. So anyway, hope you guys had a good time. I haven't decided when we're going to do the December live show. There's a good chance that it might just be like the second week of December because once you get into like the third and fourth weeks of December, you get it caught up in like the, the Christmas, New Year um, holidays. And you really, there, I mean, there's no shipping that happens during that, that those days for, for us because of um, all the FedEx shipping holidays. And like you're almost guaranteed to have delays and it's winter time. So if anything, we're probably going to do it earlier in the month. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you can, uh, throw a thumbs up or thumbs down on this video. But please do that just for just for uh, giggles, I guess. Um, yeah. So in any case, uh, thanks again for joining. And I'll see you all next time.